The thought occurs that some of you don't know what Plex is. The further thought occurs that some of you don't know what a NAS is, and this entire video will mean nothing to you. Uh, so I'm going to explain those concepts first, but stop leaving. If you already know those things, there are chapter links in the description so you can skip ahead to the bits you don't know how to do, you impatient swine. Uh, so the concepts of uh, Plex is that Plex is a media server based software that allows you a really nice interface for accessing your movies and your TV shows and your music and your pictures. Uh, more to the point though, it works with She That Should Not Be Named, so you can actually load up those movies, TV shows and music using She That Should Not Be Named, which is flipping brilliant. Uh, the other thing is, you can get the music to play out of She That Should Not Be Named, so you can actually play your local music collection through her. Uh, I did a Plex tutorial previously, but this one is specifically focused on NAS, which is Network Address Storage. I might have just made that up. Uh, but basically it's a little box that's kind of like a PC that you slot hard drives into, uh, and it backs all of your stuff up, so it keeps all of your data not only secure uh, and local on your network, it also keeps it um, properly striped across all of those hard drives so that if one fails, the other three will pick up where it left off and you won't actually lose any data. If you're transferring drives from an existing storage solution, then carefully remove them from your existing storage server. Put your old drives into the shiny new Synology NAS. Carefully. Your NAS does not have a HDMI port. I don't know that's true. I don't know you. My NAS does not have a HDMI port. Uh, that means that I can't just plug a monitor into it and then look at it and do things with a mouse and keyboard. What I have to do is connect it to my router using an ethernet cable so that it gets a network address from the router so I can access it across the network using a PC or a mobile phone. So you're going to need to know the IP address of your NAS. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use Fing, which is a really cool app that you can get from the Play Store, uh, to scan my network and tell me what the IP address is, uh, simply by pressing the refresh button. The bunker Synology NAS is on 192.168.0.17, uh, so all I've got to do is punch that number into a browser on any computer that's connected to the same router, and I'll get to my NAS. Simple. Step 4, visit that IP address using any computer on your network and then realise it's going to wipe all of your movies and TV shows off your hard drives, exclaim hell no in an angry voice, uh, and then buy some new hard drives, grumpily. Put your shiny new drives in your shiny new Synology NAS and then visit the IP address again. This time you can go through the registration process, formatting the drives and selecting usernames and passwords. Make sure you write these usernames and passwords down now because you're going to need them again. Synology have their own operating system called Disk Space Manager. Very original. Uh, unfortunately, it's Linux based, which means if you're trying to connect a Windows PC to it, it's not quite as simple as just setting up a home group and networking the computers together like you would with any other computer. Because Linux is a nightmarish hellscape, you're going to need to do something special to tell Linux it's okay. You can share the files across the network to Windows. Uh, all you have to do, quite easily thankfully, is open up Package Center, scroll down to WebDAV, uh, enable the package, and then tick the two boxes at the top. Job done. In order to transfer your TV shows and your movies from a Windows PC to your NAS, you'll need a piece of software on your Windows PC called BitConnex. Download it now, I will wait. I won't really wait! Pause the video! Once you've installed BitConnex on your Windows PC, there will be a wizard to fill out your port number and your IP address. Um, I'm not going to talk you through it, I'm going to show you. This guy's doing it now, look. See? Really easy. Done. 
That's the hard part over. Hooray! Uh, the easy bit now is all you've got to do is go back into your NAS and then into Package Center and then enable the Plex Media Server. Uh, once the Plex Media Server is enabled, you can open it up and it will take you through uh, the process of either signing up if you're doing this for the first time or signing in if you already have a Plex account. Ah! Hold it right there, dum-dum. Uh, this guy was about to walk you through then setting up the catalogue of your Plex, but you can't set up the catalogue of your Plex until your films and TV shows are in a folder that Plex can access. By default, the place I've put it in is not accessible to Plex, which is super annoying. So what you need to do is move all of your files into the Plex folder, and then we can start to catalogue the movies and TV shows. I'll let him carry on. Once signed in, it will walk you through the usual process of adding your files, and all you've got to do is browse to the videos folder and say, here are my films, and then browse to the videos folder and say, here is my TV. Plex will go, thank you, movies and TV. I will now distribute these across your network to all other Plex instances. You now have a Plex server. Yay! Uh, now all you need is a Plex client, and you can install that on either your mobile phone from the Play Store, or your Nvidia Shield in exactly the same way, uh, or your PC just by going to the Plex website, or pretty much any device you can think of, and all you do then is sign in. Uh, once you're signed into your Plex account, it will authorise you onto your Plex NAS, and then your NAS will deliver the files to your Plex client. It's as simple as that. I just want to thank Plex for setting me up with a Synology NAS, and thank Synology for sending me the NAS and an umbrella for some reason. Um, I'm perfectly content with my NAS, I really like it, I do recommend the Synology NAS to anyone that's looking for one. Uh, it's not easy to get into immediately, but it will back up all of your files uh, across multiple disks, so that if one disk fails, you won't lose all your stuff. It is a really good solution for making sure you've got all your stuff nice and secure, uh, and backed up. If you want to do that, there are links in the description to buy the Synology NAS that I've featured in this video. Uh, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, it will tell YouTube that other people should see this video and their algorithm will do all that promoting of the video stuff. Uh, if you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button, uh, ring the bell if you want to be notified when I release a video, uh, and if you want to make these videos a possibility like these amazing people here, these are my patrons from Patreon. You can be one at either Patreon or you could buy me a beer at PayPal if you would prefer. Uh, and finally, if you want to come and hang out with me and be my best friend in the world, you can do so at the Facebooks and the Tweeters and all the social medias. Come and do that. I'll see you next time. Once you've installed BitConnect on your PC, there will be a wizard how to set up a NAS server as your don't know what I'm on about. Put your brand new drives into your NAS and then I don't know what I'm on about. Hang on. The Synology NAS has a really... Synon Synology... Oh man, I'm tired. BitConnects will... Uh.